Okay, I want to do a extremely um, brief <laughs> summary of uh, skateboard art history and, and just talk about some um, key writers, why there's art on skateboards. So again, really, really brief because we don't have a lot of time. So when skateboarding started, it kind of um, came from like surfing, right? So they do, the early skateboards look a lot like surfboards right so basically it's like land surfing and so initially it was just like cruising down you know big hills and things like that very much like surfing so that sort of dictated the shapes of some of the boards but the key part of this is that the boards were made out of wood you can see how awful these metal wheels are um a whole bunch of different sizes but they were very plain they didn't have any graphics or anything on them and if they did it was very limited um sometimes they just had like pintail stripes and things like that on them but not a lot just plain pretty much plain and if you think about even um surfboards there's not like big artworks on and surfboards they tend to still have like pintail tail stripings maybe a little bit of logos but not really a whole lot so, um, the, the, the surfboards and sorry, the skateboards then started to evolve a little bit when the skateboard companies started promoting, you know, the, it rose in popularity. They started to promote maybe their own brands and they started getting sort of more base, some, some graphics on the boards and the, and the board, the graphics go on the bottom of the boards because on the top of the boards, they started putting grip tape on them. So you could stay on the boards a little bit more and you wouldn't slip off. Cause as you can imagine, just, you know, standing on top of wood, would be pretty slippery, but if we look at the graphics, so this is early like Santa Cruz um, graphics. So it sort of promoted the the brand, the company of the skateboards, and they tended to be like just a few colors, so very monochromatic, very simple sort of images that were put on there. So there's a couple sort of big influences that sort of started this whole like trend of art going on. Um, the bottom of skateboards and that being a huge factor in terms of the skateboards and one of those was thrasher magazine and again this is really dictated to kids your age like teenagers right and it was you know thrasher magazine would would come out every month and you couldn't wait till the newest issue and the cool thing about thrasher magazine well it had cool stickers and but it had articles about individual um, skateboarders um, and it had you know articles about like different uh, skateboard brands and, and trucks and wheels and, and things like that. So um, it was, it really sort of made the whole um, skateboarding industry really exciting to youth culture. And the focus too on these individual skateboarders was, was really key because then skateboarding, you know, changed from just sort of cruising around, around the streets to like this really cool thing where there's like tricks involved and then now there's competitions and then people are getting better and better and then there's these key skateboarders so um thrasher really like drove this cool skate culture and one of the things that it did is uh it really started to promote different sort of skateboard brands and uh, the graphics that were on the bottom of the skateboard so um so what happens, you couldn't wait to get the new issue. You look at all the cool new skateboards that were available and you, you had to get it. And the, the graphics were actually pretty important in the 80s. You can totally tell that this is an 80s vision skateboard because just looking at the colors, it kind of makes me cringe. But um, what they did actually in the 80s, they actually put these plastic guards on the skateboard to kind of protect the graphics. So when you're doing like slides and things like that, you wouldn't scratch up the graphics. So this is pretty important. We don't do this anymore. Um, but again, it's a different type of skateboarding back in the 80s than it is now. But the cool thing, so you're skateboarding, and then it's when you do these tricks and things like that, and you, that's when you see the bottom of the board. So this became really, really important. So it became more and more different companies that sort of promoted their own brand, right, that had their own um, images on the skateboards and you want to sort of be like, oh, I want the, that next cool Vision skateboard or that next cool Pal Peralta skateboard and things like that. And the graphics were pretty important, but that's what started. That's why you needed more skateboards because otherwise you just buy one skateboard and you'd ride it for a while. And the only reason you would need to buy a new one is if it broke, unless you had cool graphics because then you needed like you started collecting different boards. You really needed the newest board. So this was very much like a marketing thing, actually. Um, but also what drove this is some of the key um, skateboarders 
and I'm focusing in the 70s and the 80s because that's when I grew up and these are the skateboarders that I know. But so a lot of writers um, were ended up being sponsored by some of the big um, skateboard companies and they would be sponsored for competitions and things like that. And again, these are like young teenagers. But then what happened is these companies would actually make particular boards for these particular uh, skateboarders. So but the writers actually had a lot of say in terms of like the graphics that would go on their skateboard. So now um, people are buying skateboards not only because they want like a Vision skateboard or a Pal Peralta skateboard or something, but what they would want also is like, oh, Steve Caballero is my favorite writer. I need to have like his his coolest new deck, right? Um, so the the writers themselves was actually work a lot with the graphic designers and coming up with the cool images for their board. So they actually had a lot of say. Some of the writers actually designed their own boards or had input, but this was really particular to them, right? So uh, Tony Hawk, right? And just notice the shape of these old school skateboards. And if any of your parents have any of these old school original skateboards lying around, they're worth a lot of money, <laughs> right? Uh, Mike Valet, another guy. So originally, Paul Peralta designed this sort of cockroachy thing from. He didn't like it, and he actually sketched out this uh, African elephant and the work with another graphic designer, and that became something, you know, for him. So one of the more popular, um, more well-known artists from that time is uh, Jim Phillips, and he's well-known for making that screaming hand for Santa Cruz. So he's done quite a bit of stuff for Santa Cruz and like, probably other graffiti, or sorry, other <laughs> um, skateboarders. But so Jim Phillips is really well-known. Uh, if you look at it, it's very much like an illustrative sort of with a punk kind of feel, right? Um, um, but then the skateboarders, instead of just working for these big companies and yes, having some say into the design of their own decks. Um, I mean, they made money. These are young kids. These are teenagers, but now they're starting to be in their twenties and things like that. But even though they're getting sponsored by some of these big companies and in particular, Pal Peralta, they're, I mean, these companies are making money off these writers. So a lot of these writers decided to move on and take, be more in control of the brand and the whole business of skateboarding and actually start their own company. So Steve Rocco uh, started World Industries. Um, there's also uh, Vision Skateboards that uh, Mark Gonzalez was a part of. Um, there is a whole bunch of politics and stuff in Vision Skateboards. So Mark Gonzalez left Vision Skateboards. And in response to Vision, he made his own company called Blind Skateboard, so that play on Blind and Vision. Um, so just to see you kind of get an idea about how more and more in, in the early days of skateboarding, it's more and more that the actual writers themselves took wanted to have more control of like the company, the business, the imagery in their boards, and so on and so on. So that's sort of why we today there is art in the bottom of the skateboards because you know what's the difference between one skateboard and another not much they're just the same thing but it's the graphics that make people like collect them people have huge collections and it's all because of the artwork and and the brands and so now a lot of these boards back from like they're re-releasing some of these boards nowadays they won't be necessarily be in the new the old school 80s original shape that they were designed for but they're re-releasing a lot of these designs so again um but there's a huge market for all the original uh first editions but so that's just a very very brief <laughs> introduction about why there's arch on the bottom of skateboards okay so just keep that in mind when you're designing your stuff